Hi everyone, welcome to the Fleece and Harmony Knitting Podcast. I'm Kim, thank you for joining me here today. This podcast is being published on August 6, 2021, and it's recorded here on our sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island, Canada. I'm so happy that you're able to join me today, and if you're joining me every two weeks, then welcome back. If you're new to joining this podcast, uh, viewing this podcast, then welcome to you. We're going to talk about knitting, and sheep probably and uh, farm life and all kinds of other things that as they come to mind so get ready because it can this podcast could go anywhere <laughs> so welcome first of all we're going to start as usual with a farm update i do have a whip that i want to show as well and we have an fo it's not my fo but it's a customer's fo and i'm really proud to, to be able to show that and we are currently doing a kate davies knit along and we will do an update on the kate davies knit along there's usually a shop update as well which there is today there is a in the mill section and at the very end we end the podcast with the harmony part and I'm actually going to give this harmony part an introduction uh, this week I don't usually I, it's usually a surprise but I have decided that I will give an introduction to this one because it's a super interesting um, harmony moment that will take place over two episodes in fact so we'll get started with the farm update so we always talk about the weather because we're farmers and the weather is extremely important and we are surrounded all our neighbors are farmers as well our neighbors who are potato farmers are very very happy because the weather this summer has been unlike any weather that we've had in the recent history I don't know if it's uh, climate change or what it is, but the, the potato farmers are really happy because we have um, two days of sunshine and then a day and a half of rain and then two days of sunshine and a day and a half of rain. So their potatoes are doing extremely well. And other crops that require lots of water, like our apple trees that we have on the farm are just like bursting at the seams with apples. So there's gonna be a huge crop of apples this summer. However, it's not really great for trying to make hay. So most farmers now would be taking, uh, getting close to taking their second cut of hay. Um, if they've cut their hay early in the season because we had really warm weather in May and June, so the hay grew quite fast, they would have gotten a um, first cut of hay around the first third of June or the first half of June. But in order to make hay, you need to have at least three dry days in order to have the, you cut the hay, then you leave it on the field to dry. You, um, I can't remember if it's tedder or winnow. <laughs> I can't remember which is which. I think it's you ted, tedder the hay, which is you flip it over and let it dry, dry uh, again for another day and then you bale it. And if it rains on it while it's on the ground, then that actually spoils the hay because it doesn't get to be thoroughly dry before you put it in the bales and it can mold. So that's not great. So we're waiting to have hay cut. And um, the poor guy that makes our hay for us is having a bit of a, a moment because he keeps saying he's coming and then he has to call and cancel because there's gonna be rain in the forecast. So there's been really nice days, but not enough nice days in a row without any showers in order to get the hay off the field. So um, we're not worried about not having enough food to feed our sheep because there is lots of hay around. It's just that our hay is, is really late, the stuff that we would normally feed. So we're, everybody's just a little bit nervous about that. So, but for most, other farmers that are growing crops and um, crops that they have to harvest right now, they're not ready for harvest yet, so they're enjoying the wet weather. Um, that may change when they have to take the grains and everything off of the, the field because they need dry weather to do that as well. Also, we're waiting to renovate a pasture which has been prepared for the seeds and it would be great if the seeds could actually get planted because the intermittent rain will really help uh, to keep those, uh, to keep that grass uh, really growing quickly for the renovated pasture. But they can't get into the field to do the, the seeding because it's too wet. <laughs> 
so they just just gets dried out and then it, there's another shower so they can't uh, they can't get in anyway that's all part of farm life um, so we're just gonna wait and try not to worry and be patient and the someday we'll have three days in a row and everybody's ready to go the minute that that happens three days of sunshine in a row uh, the sheep are all great so they're they don't mind the rain they uh, they're just moving through the pasture as they always do if it rains a little bit too much they go under the trees and seek shelter then they come out and they're enjoying the fact that the grass is growing really really fast so they have lots and lots of food to eat right now the way that the grass is growing we'll probably actually have um, a stockpile but in the field of grass that will um, take us probably well 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 into the deep fall which is great too because then they get to um, they will get to eat outside on fresh grass for all of that time which will also take the pressure off the amount of hay that we have to um, feed them dry in in the winter so that's the farm update. We haven't seen the skunk lately, so we're not sure where she is with her babies. But we assume maybe, I don't know how fast they grow up and then they move on, but we haven't seen her lately. And we haven't really seen much signs of her either, but we, um, she should be fine. I mean, there's no real predators here on our farm because we have everything fenced in. So there's not any really kind of big animals that would be able to get her. Um, and or her babies the only thing might be a fox but I doubt that a fox would tangle with a skunk because they would get the same treatment that our dog or our cat gets when they try to get close to the skunk so uh, I guess she's just uh, laying low or else they she's moved on I'm not I'm not sure so that's uh, so that's that and that's really about all that's happening sunshine and rain and uh, it's pretty warm so that's good and tourists have started to arrive arrive on the island so we're seeing lots of people from other parts of canada mostly uh, the borders open uh, i think next week with the u.s so uh, american visitors are allowed to to come and uh, so we look forward to greeting more visitors in the shop it's been really great i've met some of you in the shop over the past week or so i've got we've had uh, conversations with some of you and uh, some friends of people that watch the podcast so that's really really fun so I'm going to talk about, first of all, I'll say what I'm wearing. I've worn this sweater a lot because it's one of my favorites. So this is a Cornwallis uh, knit in Rowan Summer Light DK and designed by Martin Story. It's, um, I've changed the colors on it from what it was in the original pattern design, but it's uh, a really, really great sweater. So you've, you've seen it a few times if you've been watching me on the podcast because I love wearing it. <laughs> And um, I'm going to talk about my, uh, my whips now. So for people that have been following along, I've been knitting on Paisley by Sitzel Hoivik and that beautiful jacket has just done a little bit of hibernating this week. I actually have done the start of the second sleeve and I've got the color work border done of the sleeve and I just am moving into the um, waffle, oh, I'm calling it the waffle pattern, but it's a check pattern. And I made a mistake when I started the design. So I ripped it back to the cut to the color work part. And then I just felt like I wanted to knit on my Even Dune by Kate Davies instead. So I kind of hibernated my Paisley for a little bit, but I will get back to it. And I'm not showing it today because there's really nothing to show since the last time that I showed you. But I do want to talk about my Even Dune progress. So this is my project for the Kate Davies knit along that, we'll ha that we're having. And I will talk more about that in detail in a minute after I show my project. Also, I'm going to make a comment that um, we've tried to address some of the issues that some of our viewers have been telling us about um, the sound and also about how far away I'm sitting from the camera. So, or the, I'm filming on an i or recording on an iPad actually. So I have tightened up the shot, so I'm a lot closer and I have a little microphone that I'm using now. So I'm hoping that the sound will be better. And certainly you're gonna be able to see the projects that I show uh, better because I'm much closer to the camera. So I hope that uh, that, that is better for everybody's, everybody's viewing. 
So the first thing I'm going to show is even do Dune and my works in progress. So this is where we are on that. This is the front. So you see the, the front of the neck is lower. It's part of the construction, the way that Kate has designed this, um, this raglan uh, sweater. And I have finished the raglan part, the raglan shaping and I have split for the sleeves and I'm now, I'll show you from the other side because there's not, uh, the needles aren't there. It's just curling up a little bit. So my sleeves are on waist yarn and I have um, started the body um, and th this little cast on here for under, under the underarm. So I'm now doing my second repeat of all of the stripes. Uh, because this is a top-down raglan, I'm able to extend my uh, cords here and try it on. So I've been doing that. I did have to um, adjust the pattern a little bit. So by the time you, I'm going to keep showing from this side because it's easier to see. By the time you finish your raglan um, increases, which are, which are right here, you can see the, the design that they make. You are supposed to have enough room that you could do your underarm, um, the binding or the casting on that you do under the underarm to split for the sleeves. But because of the, the width of my shoulders and I have a little, a little bit longer depth need a little bit longer depth for the raglan then I had to knit a few a knit a few rounds straight to get the raglan depth that I need to to fit me proper properly so that's what I've done here so there's just a little bit of plain knitting under here it's the pink stripe actually is what the extra part is that I put on then I did my cast on for the sleeve the underarm of the sleeve and now I'm just working my way down the body so this pattern does not have any waist shaping, but I am going to do a little bit of waist, uh, waist shaping. And I will start that once I reach a point that is below my bust line, I will start doing a, a little bit of gentle. I'm probably only going to take out three, three stitches on either side. Uh, well, three on the front, three on the back. So that's six, six stitches on each side. And then I will um, increase again to go over my hips. So I'm, um, I'm going to work through that. This is knitting up pretty fast. Well, this will seem pretty fast for me if you've been watching me before because I take a long time to knit stuff. But it's really cool because part, some people have been putting even doing it already in finished uh, objects for the Kate Davies Knit Along, which is just fantastic. I'm really happy about that. Um, it's really fun to see all the projects that everybody's doing. The uh, Ravelry group and the community forum on our website are both pretty active with people posting their projects and showing, showing them. So it's, uh, you can go in there and check, check it out and see what's happening. And I'm going to make a few comments about that a little bit later. Um, I also wanted to talk about the fact that because you have stripes on this, you do need to be careful uh, because at the beginning of the row, you could have a jog in your stripes. So in the um, 10 years in the making, this even dune pattern is from Kate Davies' uh, 10 years in the making book. She does give you in, uh, a reference about jogless stripes. So what she references in the book is a tutorial by Helena, uh, Helen Magnuson from Icelandic Knitting and she's got a, quite a few tutorials. I'll put a link to this in the in the bottom in the show notes and you can look at her jog. She does a, a jog join that is um, a little bit different than something that I'd seen before and I actually only looked it up today so I haven't been doing my joining like joining after the stripe the way that she recommends, but it looks like a really good and efficient way to do it and without, with it's virtually invisible. What I've been doing instead, and I don't think that it's really that noticeable. I think there was one stripe where I, I wasn't quite happy with it, but these are my joints. So the, the small stripes are the ones that are the trickiest because you just have two rows. So there's no chance really for the stitches to relax, but the, what I'm doing to get these jogless stripes, they happen right where the, the raglan um, increases are happening. So there is a little bit of a, 
a disruption in the line anyway so your eye kind of compensates for that but all I'm doing on my sweater is I'm knitting the first round especially with the white stripes that's where it seems to be the most noticeable I'm knitting the round all the way around and then when I start to do the second row of the white stripe instead of knitting the first stitch the very first stitch that you had put on in the new color I'm I'm uh, slipping that stitch and so you're basically have the effect of lifting that stitch up so right on the very um, right at the point of the join there is um, actually I have to find the right side again <laughs> right at the point of the join I actually only have one one stitch in the two stitch stripe but you really your eye like I said your eye compensates for it so it's it's really it's not really very easy to see and I'm pointing it out so I don't think if you're wearing it what do they say if you were speeding by on a on a horse would you be able to see it I don't I don't think so there is a little it's a little bit rougher here on this one um, but the rest of them seem to be pretty pretty good and it kind of hides that single slip stitch underneath where the the decreases are and then by the time I got down to um, the smoother parts I was I had practice so <laughs> they were looking a little bit better so that's the even dune sweater again I'm really enjoying to um, to knit with on this with the our, my Selkirk works worsted I will tell you again the colors that I'm using in case you haven't seen so the deep purple is amethyst brooch the white is natural so it's actually not white it's kind of an off-white the red pinky color is watermelon and that was a new color that we made for the red gradient that we did the blue turquoisey blue is sea foam the um, purple light purple is lady slipper from the amethyst gradient that we did autumn birch is the gold color and now we're back to amethyst uh, brooch so those are the colors if you're if you're uh, interested in that so that is the even dune and i'm just going to check my agenda that i got everything so we talked about the raglan adjustment and the jogless stripes so we're, that's good we've i've talked about everything that i wanted to talk about with that um that pattern again as i said is from 10 years in the making and um there's been there, somebody's already posted one that they finished um, for the knit along, so that's really uh, that's really exciting. So I don't personally have an FO, but we had a customer that actually sent us the most beautiful sample to, and she's allowing us to show it in the store. So I want to give a call uh, a call out to Nicole Lafontaine. Nicole uh, knit the Forever Changes shawl by Inbar Rothman with two skeins of uh, lichen Elden lace so she's very precise she said it's two skeins minus 6.1 grams which is what she had left <laughs> from her two skeins and I'm just going to show that shawl so the um, Elden lace in um, lichen is uh, this this color so it's kind of like a dusky a dusky green color very soft and this shawl is just unbelievable so I'm going to try to if uh, if I don't like the look of this in the video then I will um, do a picture or take a photograph I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see see it okay so uh, I think I have it backwards yes I have it backwards you might not have been able to see that detail but just look at this it's just gorgeous so the pattern um, called for a fingering weight yarn um, and our lace is actually kind of puffs up when you when you block it so it's uh, we call it lace but it seems to fit the bill for this uh, shawl which was absolutely stunning so thank you very much Nicole 
and um, we're, Nicole has generously offered to <laughs> offered to knit another sample. So we'll uh, we'll see what uh, which uh, shawl she's going to do next, and when we get that back from uh, from her, I have to send her the yarn. I haven't sent her the yarn yet. Then um, we'll uh, we'll show that as well because she's just a beautiful beautiful lace knitter, and she's all also already has projects finished for the Kate Davies knit along as well. So for the knit along, I just want to make a couple of comments. So now that the finished projects are starting to show up in the feed, I just want to make sure that um, I'm clear about I'm only going to be choosing the winners of the prizes from the, the finished object threads. So we have a thread in Ravelry for finished objects and if you're posting on the community forum you only need to post in one place if you want. Um, I will catch capture all of the finished objects from both places but you have to put your finished objects in the finished object feed because I won't or thread because I won't be going through all of the um, chatter that's on the, uh, the, the general thread for the Kate Davies knit along. There's just too many posts there already. There's more than a hundred posts in the Ravelry one and the community forum from our website is also starting to be quite active as well. So you just have to make sure that you do a final picture and put, put it in the thread uh, for the finished objects in both of those places to make sure that your entries are captured for the prizes. For the prizes, again, I'll repeat what we're giving. We were generously um, given a set of shorties, size small shorty needles from Chiagu. That's the blue kit if you want to look at what you get exactly online. So it's the blue kit that we will be giving as a prize. We, um, Kate Davies has given us a beautiful, beautiful cowl. It's the North Star cowl and the color that she sent us is in buoy and silver. And you can look at that on her website as well. It's, on, it's for sale as a finished item on her website. And we also have um, a knitting journal that uh, is fr also by, from Kate Davies. So a uh, place to write all your notes about your projects and so forth and um, has the knitting, uh, her, her insignia on the front of it. So it's really lovely. So those are the prizes. Um, I also was asked because we talked about inkling, the inkling book when we were talking about, um, I'm knitting out of 10 years in the making, but Kate also has a new book, which is inkling. And I've certainly shown this on the podcast before, but I didn't do a slideshow of the patterns inside. So I do want to do that. And uh, we're going to go to that right now. So we'll look at all of the patterns. So there's um, patterns for um, Kate does inkle weaving as well. So there's three patterns in here for inkle weaving. And there's, um, I'm Sure, I'm hoping I'm not getting this mixed up. There's there's 12, I think there's 15 patterns all together. Three of them are for inkling we weaving and 12 of them are knitting, knitting patterns. So we'll just uh, skip over and look at the slideshow for inkling, Kate Davies' newest book.
now um, you've got a good uh, a good view of those. I just love that little yellow cardigan that's in that uh, that uh, book. It's just so sweet. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's kind of, it has a little bit of lace on it. Maybe that'll be a next project. I don't. I don't know. So uh, that's uh, you can check that out. We have them for sale on our website, and we have all of Kate Davies' books that are have knitter, knitting patterns in them. And we also carry Handy Woman, which is her her, uh, her book that she wrote. Um, just a little bit about her uh, her knitting knitting life. That's so, all that I wanted to ta tell you about for the Kate Davies Knit Along. There's still lots of time to join if you haven't joined yet. It ends on November 30th. So, and if you get, have time to knit more than one project, go right ahead and post as many finished objects as you can make in that time. And we'll count all of them as entries in, uh, in for the, the prize draws. A little bit. I haven't mentioned anything about the Prince Edward Island Fiber Festival. Uh, I, we were talking about it a lot before COVID hit because it was that was going to be our inaugural year last last year, and of course we had to postpone it. We were hoping to po just postpone to 2021, but we decided about a month and a half ago on the committee for the for the Fiber Festival that. Um, it was a couple months ago that we had a quick meeting and decided that we were not going to go forward for 2021 as well. Um, we were watching the ups and downs of the uh, of what was happening in the world as far as travel goes, and we went we were swinging back and forth from oh shoot maybe we acted too soon to oh I'm glad that we're not doing it. so I don't know it's still a little bit disruptive this year, but it is back on for September 2022. Everything that we stopped, we just pressed pause on uh, the committee and there's an organizing um, uh, management group that is, is working on the details of, of, the, of the Fiber Festival and they have they finished up everything and wound everything up and just pressed pause so that when we're ready to start again to, to get going, we can basically just dust off everything and uh, just pick up where we left off. So we are planning on doing that. Uh, the committee will probably have their next meeting in September and in September that's when we'll start doing the formal planning for the next podcast. So for the people that have been asking, I know a lot of people wanted to come to PEI during that time to attend. Um, again, in 2021, there won't be, be a fiber festival, unfortunately, but we're really confident that for 2022, we're gonna be able to have our festival if within all its glory, just as how we had planned to have it in when we first started getting excited about doing the inaugural festival. The week that the festival uh, falls was the last week of September. That may change because there's some uh, issues uh, with bookings of the hotel. As you can imagine, everybody that had to cancel everything is now scrambling to try to get things booked for 2022. And um, normally there would our date would have been secured, but there is a huge event that's happening and um, it seems that they might have picked our week, but it's not finalized yet. So as soon as I know what the dates are for 2022, I will be sure to tell everybody. In the meantime, we do have some people that have written uh, to me and have reached out and asked, um, you know, they're still coming. So they're still coming and they were asking what to do. So um, the the uh, PEI Fiber Festival website is still up and on the PEI Fiber Festival website they we had um, put in a bunch of information about the PEI Fiber Trail so the, the, the you can access that information online. The PEI Fiber Trail is a um, self-guided tour of PEI and all the fiber um, we we've kind of have a have a lot of fibery attractions in uh, on PEI that way above and beyond what our population would would you would think for our population and um, the uh, owners of the Belfast Mini Mill actually started the PEI Fiber Trail a couple num a number of years ago so Linda Nobles from Belfast Mini Mills had put together a group of people that wanted to um, join the PEI Fiber Trail. They have information um, on their website as well, I believe, but there, uh, and there's a pamphlet that's been, been made for the, the Fiber Trail. 
everybody that was uh, participating in the fiber trail last year has agreed i think everybody I'm, i don't manage this i'm just a i'm just a, <laughs> a participant um, i think everybody has agreed to uh, re-offer for this year so they um, they're going to be um, using the pamphlets uh, the same ones that they had last year and you can find um, these in our tourist information uh, places but uh, you also can see on um, the PEI Fiber Festival website, all of the destinations have been plotted out there. And uh, I think you can also um, see it from the Belfast Mini Mill, um, Mini Mill website, I believe, I'm not sure, but for sure you can check that out. So if you're still planning on coming to the island, even though there's not a fiber festival, there still is a fiber trail. There's some really great, great um, small businesses that are part of this fiber trail. And I really encourage you to uh, take, a, take in as many of the attractions as you can or shops as you can when you come, if you're coming. And certainly we're, we're there on it and uh, we're, we're happy to welcome you as well. Okay, so that is about the, uh, the PEI Fiber Festival, an update. As soon as there's more information or information changes, I will certainly let you know. And there is a, um, you can subscribe for a newsletter for the PEI Fiber, Fiber Festival as well. And we'll start get that going again in another couple months to start, uh, start telling people um, uh, what's happening for 2022 and most importantly what the exact date is as soon as we know. So that uh, that should um, take care of any questions for that and if, if not you can you can certainly write us uh, again and I can answer questions. I will say that I'm getting a lot of questions from all the different social media channel so people are messaging from on instagram and um it's sometimes and on facebook so it's hard for me sometimes to answer right away on social media um, because i don't i'm not checking that as often as i'm checking the shop email which i work on every day and also in some of the comment uh, areas like either in uh, on ravelry or in our community forum. So what I would recommend is that if you have a direct question, either a question about knitting help, sometimes I get questions about knitting help or suggestions for colors and things like that. If Even if you see something on Instagram or in Ravelry or other places, if you wanna send me a direct email, that's really, it, because you need an answer, that's really the best way of uh, reaching out to us and you can just email us through our, our website and uh, the email web, the, we, we get all of those uh, emails uh, promptly and then I get to flag them in my system so I know which ones that I actually have to take action on. And that'll just help me to, um, I'm frantically going through all, all the different forms of messaging that can happen and I know that I'm missing some or I'm answering some really late or I'm answering things twice because I get a message on, messenger in Facebook and I get a message in Instagram and I find myself I'm find myself thinking okay am I crazy because I'm pretty sure I answered this but I don't see the answer because it was answered on another channel so if you need an answer about something the easiest and best way and it helps me is if you uh, send the message through uh, the website on our on our shop email and then I can flag it and track it and make sure that I've, I've answered your questions. So that's just a little bit of uh, housekeeping. So we're gonna move on to the um, shop update. So there's a couple things, there's not really anything new in the shop update, but I, there's a couple things that I wanna show that we have um, back in stock or we've restocked and prepared a little bit better for uh, the ordering like some of the kits that uh, we're selling out and then people have to wait so we're, we're stocking up so i'm just gonna um, make a couple notes about uh, some of those things so the first thing is i'm just going to show um, the vamps again so these vamps are were knit by a gal that works in the shop janet and they're knit out of uh, our lambs wool we have uh, quite a lot of black 
uh, let sheep in our flock. And this was wool that we had clipped in the last clip from our black lambs. And we spun this up into a yarn that was specially made for to making these vamps. So the vamps are, is a pattern from the Saltwater Classics book. So that's the second in the series, the Saltwater series. Uh, the Saltwater Mittens is the first one, Saltwater Classics is the second one, and Saltwater Gifts is the third one. And Vamps appeared first in the Saltwater Classics, but there is a, um, a variation of the Vamps in the Gifts book as well. Janet made a um, little bit of a modification. She made the uh, ankles a little bit shorter. The ones in the book come a little bit higher but she just made them to the length where they just come to the top of her um, to shoes. So if you're wearing sneakers or something like that, they, they fit perfectly there. And we sell the yarn to make them. We did sell a few pairs of, of them to, uh, that were hand knit, the, the uh, first ones that we made, but it's really not, um, it didn't make sense to sell them hand knit because when we had to charge for the, the uh, knitting, it, uh, it's just, it's a very quick project. So it's, we felt it was better just to provide the yarn. So we have uh, yarn in natural black. So the only color is natural black. So it's not dyed, and, but that is the only color <laughs> that it comes in. And we uh, skein it off in enough length to make these exact vamps with the shorter the shorter ankles so you have enough yarn it's a two ply it's twisted fairly tightly and the plies are also twisted tightly so that you get a good sturdy vamp and the reason why i'm showing these again is because i have literally been wearing these every single day since about the 15th of may the only days that I don't have them on is when they're being washed. <laughs> so, and I wanted to show them because they're, they're really, there's nothing special. They're just knit at a fairly tight gauge, but the, there is nothing, uh, not a mark on them. And I walk a lot of steps in the mill back and forth. So I'm wearing them all day and um, there's hardly any pilling. There's a few little, a few little things, but the backs are staying perfectly. I do have good fitting shoes, so if you have uh, shoes that are rubbing, I don't know if you'll have the same results, but um, they're just perfect. So I'm really, really happy with this yarn because it's very, very durable, but it's also very smooth and silky and soft. So it's 100% wool. There's nothing, nothing else in it to, um, to strengthen it. It's just the, the, the design of the yarn and the fact that it's knit quite tightly for this, uh, the, for this pattern and uh, it's just been really great. So we do have skeins of that left and we can make more if they sell out, but you can check the, those um, for that in the, uh, the link. So I'll, now that we're talking about the shop update, I'll just remind everybody that in the show notes, I collect everything that we show in the podcast into one collection. So right under the description of the video, you'll see uh, a link for the collect collection, everything shown in this podcast. If you click on that link, you're directed to our web shop and everything that I talk about is there all in one place. I do sometimes list separate things underneath just to draw some more attention or it's just a more direct way to get to it. But honestly, I'm doing that less and less because the collection link is uh, working really well because you can see you can see everything that we talk about and this is episode 77 so the collection link that will be in the description here is collection 77 and all of them are uh, are listed there so there there's uh, we've been doing that for quite a long time so there's quite a few collections from different uh, different podcasts and i'll just give you a hint that on the web address uh, or the URL, when you see the, the you can see what's written out there, it'll say collection 77. If you just change the, the number to another number, 76, 75, then you'll be directed to the collections that are, um, that are from those previous, uh, previous websites. Also, I'm happy to report that the chapters is actually working. So I've created chapters for the different sections of the podcast and those chapters are now working in YouTube. So if you want to, there's certain sections that you want to either go back and look at or jump to, 
you can now do that uh, the time signature I use the time signatures those are written out in the description but it also YouTube will show them if you scan your mouse along the bottom of the of the uh, video as it's playing you can see the different chapters as well so really trying to make things as easy for people to find the things that they want to find and uh, to get to the parts that they that they want to see if they want to see them over again so that's a little segue for the shop update so now um, back on track so I we had um, a long time ago I guess when we first started po podcasting we had a knit along for mittens and it was uh, smitten for mittens knitting or smitten for knitting mittens <laughs> I could never say it when we did it and I still can't say it so on that uh, that knit along we were featuring um, two pairs of mittens for uh, that are designed by Sophia Camerborn and the first one was roses are red and the second one is the Trondheim mittens so we made kits at the time of the knit along for these mittens to to knit so the pattern you have to buy directly from Ravelry uh, from Sophia so we don't sell the pattern but we do sell the yarn because some of the color work is just a little tiny bit of um, of color work and on with the houses on the Trondheim mittens so we've done kits so for Trondheim there's only one one kit and uh, the colors are, are uh, here you have um, uh, I believe it's rhubarb and uh, autumn birch and this is these two colors were made specifically to match the colors that were in the original pattern of the Trondheim mitten so these are not colors that we sell individually they were made specifically to give this color for that so that's the Trondheim mitten kit so that's in stock and for the roses are red mittens this is rhubarb but you can also get kits in um, to make the uh, autumn birch as the main color so instead of if you don't want red and you want the goldy tone the colors in the um, the band are a little bit different that for that the gold pattern and I should make note too that inside there's this beautiful little facing which is a contrasting color as well so you have all the yarns so it's either the um, the autumn birch mittens or the rhubarb color and there is also take the fairy which is a blue uh, to give you blue on the main part but I don't have a kit um, with me for that um, I do have the rhubarb and I have the autumn the autumn birch so and we got a new tool for winding the skein so the autumn birch was not it wasn't used for that <laughs> That's skein so it's a lot uh, a lot bigger but our new tool is uh, giving us these really beautiful neat neat uh, skeins so we have those mitten kits in stock if you want to check those out and finally in the shop update I wanted to talk about um, the puffin hat again so uh, this um, design was made by I'm not going to put it on myself this time I got this head um, Carla Wolf designed this it's in in Ravelry the official pattern is called 2021 puffin kit or puffin hat so here you have um, you have stones it was designed in our yarn so you have stones as the main color and then you've got all the detail colors and we have done kits for that which flew off the shelf pretty quickly so we're back now back in stock um, of those kits as well um, we have had a couple people that wanted to make um, more than one or two hats so if you're um, if you want to make multiple hats you can buy all of these colors are um, as individual skeins so I would say if you're making more than five <laughs> it's better for you to buy full skeins and you can get about five I just did a calculation for a customer that I think is making six and she's able to get six hats out of um, one skein of each of the color except for the main uh, back color which is stones and you need it to to do six hats for that so in the kit the colors are stones there's crow wing for the, the detail around the face of the puffins there's natural this little tiny uh, part for the beak there's um, clementine and there's October sunset 
And then there's uh, the red is the um, bonfire, which is also what's what's on the on the brim of the of the hat. So you have all of those in the in the skeins here in the kit. I think that's it for the shop update. So now we're going to do an in the mill section and the in the mill feature this week is carding. So, so far we have uh, skirted the fleece, we've washed the fleece, we showed picking the fleece and fiber separating the last time and now the next step is carding. carding. I almost said cardigan, that's a town close, close by, so we're, we're carding. And this is where things are really, this is the last kind of combing phase of the, of the processing. So all of these processes so far are all just to get the fleece ready to start doing the actual spinning prep work. So uh, we're gonna go back into the mill. And again, these clips are clips that we had taken a long time ago when we first started podcasting. And I'm taking them out of those original episodes and doing them separately here. And then at the end of, uh, we, at the, end of the series, I'll do a playlist with all of the, all of the um, in the mill sections that do the different steps, that show the different steps of making our yarn. So we're gonna hop back into the mill and watch some carding. So picking the fleece is opening it up by putting it on this belt and it goes through a drum which breaks it up open and then it's blown into this little room where we condition it. And after it's conditioned, it's dried and taken out onto the dehair if necessary. Not all fleeces need dehairing. It's basically just to remove coarse fibers that you don't want going in the yarn. And once it's been through these drums, it comes out the other end very open, very fluffy cleaner and less coarse overall because the heavy hairs actually fall through the drums down into a catch basin below the machine and then we're ready to card. Okay, so we're finally carding the fiber and I actually did find an assistant to help me show how we do this. This is Janet and she's arranging the fiber on the belt of the carder. Each of the blue lines indicates one section of the belt and we'll put the exact same weight of fiber on each section so that we get a really nice even roving out on the other side. It's important that the fiber is spread out very evenly on the belt so that it comes out as a nice even roving which will be easy to spin. So Janet will spend quite a bit of time checking the speed that the machine is running at and smoothing out the fiber on the belt so that it's going through as evenly as possible. and then she'll go over and get the next batch, which in this case we're doing 60 gram batches. So every uh, section between the blue lines will have 60 grams of fiber on it. This is actually some lovely alpaca belonging to one of our custom spinning clients that we're working on today. This is just a close up of some of the drums of the carter going around. You can see it's quite a system of pulleys and drums and the fiber really goes through a lot of different drums before it comes out the other side. And this is all designed to just create a really smooth roving for spinning. Then finally we have a completed roving coming out the end of the carter. It's not quite ready for spinning yet. It still has to go through something called the draw frame which we'll be showing you next week or next episode. All right, so now we're getting close. Now that the fluff is all organized into roving or slivers, now we really start the, the next step will be uh, a pre-drafting step. So we'll show that on the next podcast. So I'm going to now talk about the harmony part. So normally I just say goodbye here and then I ask you to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. I'll do that again So and hit your notifications. So I'll do all of that, but don't move away yet if you, if you usually don't watch the harmony part because this is, uh, I'm gonna give a little bit of an introduction. So as um, if you've been watching for a long time, then you know that uh, we've talked about this, that Belfast was settled by settlers that were brought over to Prince Edward Island 
um, as part of a program to settle, settle the island that was sponsored by Lord Selkirk. And three boats arrived in Prince Edward Island on, in 1803. There was the Polly, which was the first one that arrived, and that was the, is the most famous one. Actually, I think it might have had the most people on it. The second one to come was the Dykes, it was called, and that was, um, I think there was like, um, uh, there was only like a few weeks or a few days in between the arrival of the three, three boats. And then the last one was the Otten. So the three of them came with settlers from uh, Scotland, the Highlands of Scotland, and they, they set sail from Portree in Scotland. And Portree is um, a, a pretty famous uh, seaside town. So the Scottish settlers arrived and then they settled in different places and they named places of, with names that were familiar from home. And Portree is, was a little tiny place here that is no longer called that. And there was a road called Portree Road. And um, that road has just been, I guess, what would you call it, renovated, I guess, <laughs> renovated. Um, it now borders where the original road was. It now, um, you can access it from the Trans-Canada Highway in this uh, area. And it borders a farmer, farmer's fields. It actually goes down between two farmers um, that are our neighbors and it goes down to a body of water that used to be called Portree River, which is not, it's not called that anymore. And there, were a, there was a bridge and everything. So the government of PEI undertook a, a renovation of that road and now it's a walking trail. So Ken and I actually took a walk down that, uh, that trail I don't know if you can, I guess it's still just called a trail. It's pretty wide, so and it's um, beautifully finished, so it's easy to, easy to walk. And we took a walk down that road, and on either side there's farmer's fields, and there's also uh, quite an old hedgerow on one side. So I'm going to do two um, segments of our walk down that, that trail, and the first one is focusing on the hedgerow because there was just the day that we were going down there was so so many beautiful flowers growing there at wild that we took pictures a montage of pictures of all the different uh, um, flowers that we saw along the Portree Road so that's going to be the harmony part this week so I really hope you enjoy it next week will or next podcast will um, we shot some video as well as we approach the water the river and and uh, on Portree Road so we'll show that in the next episode but right now I'd love you to just relax and enjoy all of the flowers that are just growing wild in that that old hedgerow and listen to some relaxing music at the same time so we I'll wish you goodbye I hope you have a great two weeks and we'll see you in two weeks time bye